Nicholson, and on the line with me, as he always is, Monday at 1, as well as today, Friday at 1, is Jerry Bonkowski, the right rev of speed, NBCSports.com, sometimes you might hear him on Sirius, but uh, this is where you hear him on commercial radio, and he's a motorsports writer, covering, we always talk to him about NASCAR, the Cup Series, that sort of thing, but what you might not know, in although you do if you read him on NBCSports.com, is he's just as knowledgeable about NHRA, which comes to Bristol this weekend. Of course, tonight they're going to do the qualifying, the drag qualifying. That's always big on a Friday night. But before we talk about drag racing, because the Cup Series is off this week, Father's Day, nothing there. Want to ask you, Jerry, you came up with your Cup Power Rankings, and you had Joey Logano tied with Kyle Busch for number one. And I know a lot of people have been talking about that. Tell us a little bit about how you came to both of them. You couldn't choose one or the other. Why is that? Well, it wasn't just me. I mean, we have, you know, it's our entire staff. We have four. Okay, it was your byline. Forgive me. But, yes, please do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, we have our four, dry, or four writers, rather, that uh, we all, you know, uh, have an equal um, input into the power rankings. And then uh, the, way we, the way every, we, each of us, you know, put the uh, rank each individual driver, I assign a point. Well, yeah, Haley Deegan has been, I mean, you mentioned k and uh, that is an up-and-coming driver that has gotten a lot of uh, attention. How, how long do you think it is before she gets a uh, ride on a superior circuit? Well, I had a long talk with her and her father, Brian, who's well-known in the uh, extreme racing world, you know, uh, motorcycle racing and things like that. Mm-hmm. Other thing that before we move to uh, what's going on in Bristol Dragway this weekend, uh, the, you know, Cup Series off this week. Uh, Father's Day, they take Mother's Day off. I understand that. You know, they take Easter off. I understand that. Uh, I remember that when I was going over the schedule next year, when Bristol uh, BMS moves into the playoffs, 
that, uh, you know, you mentioned, why are there these two weeks uh, vacant next 220, uh, next season, middle of the summer, and you said, well, that's when the Olympics are on. And I, you know, and in a little way, I was surprised about that because baseball won't be taking the Olympics off, you know, and all this. And uh, I, I was a little surprised that NASCAR did, but I guess I'm a little surprised that they do take Father's Day off because I guess I've always thought about father and son going to the ballpark on Father's Day. I remember uh, a sportscaster I'm a fr uh, friends with, uh, Stan Saverin up in Pittsburgh, who once wrote a very touching and eloquent column about when he was a little kid and his dad and all that, and how it was more, you know, his dad made it seem like he was taking him, but it was more like Stan was taking his dad. Uh, and why isn't that the case in Cup Series? Why don't they sort of feel that Father's Day is that sort of father and son day? Well, they've always had, uh, you know, it's always been a situation where they have raised on that Father's Day. It's only recently that they, uh, you know, have not. I mean, you know, I think this is, what is this, the second year or first year? I know it's the first year, but I mean, I think, I'm not sure. I think they had last year off, too, as well. And, you know, it, it kind of coincides with having Mother's Day off as well, too. You know, it's, it's, it's the right time to obviously honor, you know, a mother on Mother's Day or a father on Father's Day. And that's why... You know, they, they uh, uh, decided to not to have the Cup Series race this weekend. But that being said, there's still a lot of racing this weekend. We've got the Xfinity and Truck mm -hmm. Series both racing at Iowa Speedway. We've got the trucks tomorrow uh, and then the Xfinity Series on sun Sunday. So, you know, there there's a, a good, um, you know, it's still going to be a good weekend. And especially, you know, for sons and fathers who are going to get together, you know, bond over racing. Well, it may not be Cup, but they'll be seeing, you know, the future Cup stars on Sunday if they watch the Xfinity race on TV. And, you know, going back to your other point about the um, the uh, you know taking the two weeks off next year, well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, obviously, the Olympics. Two, NBC's covering the Olympics or broadcasting the Olympics. So, uh, you know, and, and NASCAR understands that you know every four years the Olympics you know are the biggest game mm -hmm. around. You know, for about a, almost a month period of time, and you know, sure you could have races during the Olympic period of time, but you know, it would kind of serve to detract, I think, from NASCAR. So I think, in you know, by not racing for two weeks, it gives teams a well-deserved break or vacation. Because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, teams do not get vacations during the course of the season. They may get a few days off here on an off weekend, but, I mean, they just, they're not able to really, you know, go with their families and enjoy, you know, maybe a week away at the beach or something like that. So this will be a positive thing for everybody. It's a positive thing for NASCAR. It's a positive thing for NBC. Positive thing for the Olympics, and you know it, it's. I'm, I'm looking forward to next year. I think it's going to be. Uh, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are going to probably say, "Well, why didn't we do this in the past? You know, we should have done this more in the past." So I, I think it's it's definitely a, a good trend going forward. Possibly, but I, you know, I remember picking up after the 1984 Summer Olympics, uh, a Sports Illustrated magazine. And there were no features. It was everything was about the Olympics. There were no features on baseball. There's no features on football. There were no features on NASCAR. And that's when I started preferring the sporting news, to be brutally honest with you, because I was like, look, I don't want to read about Mary Drecker. I don't want to read about why the Pirates are in last place or, you know, what this would be. I mean, that was sort of my mindset. And I just have always wondered is the NASCAR fan, you know, is that. The, the same guy that's going to watch, uh, you know, sprinting or something like that. That being said, probably the biggest sporting event that I've ever attended as a fan, possibly the most uh, memorable, was being in Atlanta when Carl Lewis won his ninth gold medal. Well, see, there you go. Yeah, I mean, that's, and I had a friend who took me down there. I was actually talking about him. Uh, his name is John Krasinski, and uh, his, I was talking about the uh, death of Pat Bowden and his grandfather actually was spoke was a giant season ticket holder really liked Bowden when he met him and so that was what the story was and if you want to see it it's now on archive on our 1420 WEMB Sports Radio Facebook page but I'm taking up time to talk about the NHRA uh, Iowa and the Tri Cities I guess uh, motorsports still alive and well for uh, the for Facebook or for, listen to me for Facebook for Father's Day. You've got to excuse me, Jerry Bonkowski. We just became the most followed sports talk radio station on Facebook in the Tri-Cities. So that's still on my mind, you see. But, you know, I was looking at this event. We were talking on Monday about how the horsepower has been capped, decreased even, in Cup Series racing. 
but you mention, you know, it's still 700 horsepowers in drag racing. I was remembering the uh, trailer for the movie Eat My Dust, you know, they steal a 700 horse stalker and take to the roads and all that, if you remember that. And so I was thinking, I mean, is this one of the appeals in your mind of drag racing that now the most powerful engines are in the NHRA? Well, let me let me clarify one one very significant uh, thing. Uh, NHRA, particularly top fuel and funny car, they don't have seven hundred horsepower engines. They have eleven thousand horsepower. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I mean, and, and that's what fans want to see. They want to see that raw power, that raw speed, that you know. And remember, it was uh, what about ten years ago? I guess it was maybe eleven years ago. Uh, you know, we lost. Late great Scott Kalip, uh, they at English Town, which is no longer on the schedule, but uh, he was involved in a, in a tragic crash. He was killed in it. And part of the reason why NASCAR, I mean, sorry, NHRA uh, scaled back from a quarter mile to only a thousand feet for the, uh, the top fuelers and the dragsters and the funny cars is because of that power, because of that speed. Now, that being said, last week in um, uh, uh, Topeka, Robert Height the all-time fastest run in a funny car, 337-plus miles an hour. I mean, they're going to hit 340 within the next year or two. I'm convinced of that. And, you know, then you start saying to yourself, when is fast too fast? You know, and, I mean, I think fans still love to see these cars go that fast. They love to see the, you know, the acceleration. Uh, they love to see the, you know, it's obviously the, the interaction that the draft drivers have with the fans is, you know, second to none. I mean, they, every play, like the any trade likes to say, every uh, ticket is a press pass. I mean, a pass rather. You, know, you can look right at the cars, talk to the drivers, watch the teams working on the cars, all that kind of thing. But I think that you know the, the biggest thing, uh, the biggest allure for a lot of fans that are coming to the Bristol Dragway this weekend, they want to see speed. And there's also a number of storylines out there. The number one storyline, which we've been following since last year, and we're still waiting for. And, I mean, what better way to celebrate Father's Day is if John Forrest wins 150, his 150th race, and he's got a, he's been on 149 since last uh, August, I believe, it's been, or since July, I think it might have been. But you know, he's won 150. I mean, he's the winningest driver ever. I mean, you know, every win he makes is always you know setting a new record. But you know, that 150 has been a milestone he's been trying to chase down for a while. And what better way for him to do it than at Bristol and on Father's Day? I think it'd be a fantastic storyline. Well, I guess what I uh, was looking at was more like, isn't Billy Torrance going to be right there uh, in the on, on Sunday at the Menards uh, in the number two position, right behind his son uh, Steve, who has you know won five races in a row? And is I mean, isn't that the Father's Day story though of the event this weekend? I'm not even sure if Billy's racing. Well, I, I'm looking right here. Okay, this is from the NHRA site. It says, Billy Torrance looked the part on Sunday at the Menards uh, presented. He qualified number two. Oh, I'm sorry. Here he goes. Yeah, so that was, that was last week. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. All right. He's taking Father's Day off. So I am wrong. Stupid question. Marky Bilson. My apologies to everybody. <laughs> I misread the article. I apologize. Okay. I look really, really, really knowledgeable. All right. No, but no. So there you go. But no, let me, that just goes into here then. I guess they did the fun. Why wouldn't you do it on Father's Day for that? That doesn't make any sense. That's the question. Why wouldn't you do it on Father's Day? Let me save my ass that way. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the thing is that, you know, obviously the NHRA race will be on Father's, I mean, it's will be on TV as well, and, you know, uh, it, it's going to be a, a big thing for the NHRA, you know, at Bristol, because it's always one of the most popular venues, and, you know, it's right across, obviously, from Bristol Motor Speedway, uh, and, you know, the, the drivers like coming out there, the teams like coming out there, you know, and the fans like coming out there, so, you know, I think that there's a lot of... Um, a lot on the line for this race. I mean, this is going to be, what, the 13th, I think, or 14th race of, of the season so far. Uh, no, third, no, it can't be. No, it's going to be, let's see, I think, no, the 11th. 11th or 12th. I, I'm not, about, uh, you know, almost halfway through the season. Approximately a dozen. We'll get to that, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, so the thing is, I mean, you know, this is a good way to send the schedule into the summer months, if you will. You know, you've got a lot of other tracks on it. You've got Norwalk, Ohio, you've got Epping, New Hampshire, you've got the, the West Coast ro uh, swing with Denver, uh, Sonoma, and Seattle. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of big action coming up, and the more a team or driver can do now, uh, you know, in preparation for the playoffs, it's the sixth race countdown to the 
championship, the better. So that's why I think that Bristol is such a major uh, of, of major importance for everybody in, in this in this race because it's it's a big venue, it's a big track, you know, and it's big. Uh, there's a lot to live up to. And there's a lot of bragging rights to be earned if you win uh, this coming weekend too. I've got to really start embracing that because I know that there are like people that'll just take their cars and you know use the dragway and all that. Uh, and I've been to that. I, I remember uh, years ago there was an event called Duke's Fest that I attended. Uh, it was actually Duke's Fest actually would have been an extension of something that uh, myself and uh, well really a, a gentleman by the name of Anish Sagal who's a good friend of mine. He put on the first Dukes of Hazard convention in 1998 in Keysville, Virginia, and it took off from there but i mean you had people you know dragging their generally replicas on the drag and that was something to watch i mean it really was and you had ben jones who played cooter who couldn't you know he would jump early and said no you've got to come back here. you know it was kind of intriguing too that's why he didn't drive the car but one luke did anyway but uh no i i wanted to uh, uh get into this what is it going to take to stop Steve Torrance this week and end that five game or five game five race winning streak. That's what everybody wants to know. I don't think there's a way to stop. I mean, this guy's unstoppable. I mean, he is. You know, I've been covering the sport since the uh, late '70s, and uh, first, you know, I mean, actually even before that, it was probably actually the early '70s. But I used to go to uh, US 30 drag strip, which is no longer around, but you know, in, uh, right across the Illinois Indiana border, and that was just you know. It was, that was a lot of time where there was a lot of match racing and that kind of thing. And it, you know, I've seen all the best of the best over the years. Don Garland, Shirley Muldowney, Don Prudhomme, mm -hmm. Kenny Bernstein, Joe Amato, go down the list. I have never seen a guy make such a huge impact in such a short period of time as I've seen with Steve Torrance. I mean, his big, you know, uh, you know he's got, what, 32 wins, I think, now. Uh, and uh, the majority of them have come only in the last couple of years. I mean, that says a tremendous amount about how good that Capco team is, how good he is as a driver. And this is a guy that, you know, he's only, what, 36, 37 years old, but he's overcome so much adversity. He had a uh, he had a heart attack, he had cancer, and yet he is, you know, the best in the business right now. I mean, you know, we, we, a lot of people say, well, who's going to replace John Forrest as the, the big name in the sport once, you know, or if Forrest ever retires? And I don't think he ever will, but that's a whole other story. I think that, that Steve Torrance right now is positioned to become the next John Forrest. I mean, the guy is unstoppable. I mean, I think he can win number six this week, and I think he can win you know, another two, three in a row. I mean, I would not be surprised to see him win as many as ten in a row. Well, now, that's what Richard Petty once did in Winston Cup. What do you think would be more impressive? If Let's just say, theoretically, if both of them won ten in a row, what would be more impressive? Okay. Yeah. Fields of 40 or more cars, whereas with drag racing, you know, you, you, you only the top 16 qualify, and then the elimination on Sundays are always, you know, the 16 fastest. So I would probably say Petty had a, had a little bit of an edge there, but, you know, for modern day racing, it's going to be hard to pick against Steve Torrance. I mean, the guy is just so good. I'm saying that. Yeah, I, absolutely. The idea of the amount of cars that you have on the track. Yeah, absolutely. I, I get that right there. Uh, one guy though that has been flying under the radar. This is from the John City Press and Jeff Birchfield, our friend here. Uh, and he mentions J.R. Todd, who won the Funny Car Championship last year, but this year only fifth in the points uh, standing. So he's a guy that a lot of drag racing fans have been looking at. Uh, you mentioned John Force and Funny Car, but. What about Todd? Why is, if Fifth is struggling, why is he struggling? He's not struggling. No, I mean, believe me, we're, we're still way too early in this season uh, to talk about a driver struggling. I mean, if he was out of the top ten, yeah, then I'd say he's struggling, but he's not. I mean, you remember, you know, the, the point structure in NHRA, you can have a swing of, I think it's 132 points from one race to another race. That includes, you know, being, having a low ET or, the, or setting a record, all that kind of stuff, plus the points you uh, earn for the way you finish in the race. So, you know, if, if he's, uh, let's say, hypothetically 100 points out of first place right now, he can turn that around really quickly in one day on Sunday. So I, he's not struggling by any stretch. I mean, there's just, the competition is so close. There's such parity in NHRA right now that a lot of motorsports fans, I don't think they really realize how good that competition is, how close. 
close the competition is. I mean, we're always talking about like the NASCAR about how close the competition is, how how, how tight the race is. Well, nobody can get tighter than NHRA. I mean, when you have a field of sixteen that's separated by one tenth or one one hundredth of a second, that's pretty stout. In my, mm-hmm. That's in anybody's book. So, you know, I, I'd like to see more fans really get into the NHRA and, and watch some what you know some of the excitement they have because. I mean, some of these speeds, like I said, were like about Robert Hyde you know, last week, 337 plus. I mean, you don't see that in, in, in NASCAR. You don't see that in Sprint Car. You don't see that in anywhere. You don't see that in Formula One. You see that in NHRA, and that's where, uh, you know, that's where I think the future of NHRA is going to be is seeing the speeds go up. But, again, you're also in risk. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, Marky, but you go over the last two, three years, uh, we have seen a number of explosions, you know, car uh, motor explosions. Primarily funny car, but we've seen a few in top fuel as well, and you know, some other uh, you know, mishaps and accidents and that kind of thing. And then you start saying to yourself, uh, you know, this is my opinion, but you know, when is too, when is fast too fast, you know, and, or when is too fast fast, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I think that we may start seeing some kind of a semblance to slow the cars down because you know when they slow the cars down by breaking it down from 1,320 uh, feet to uh, to uh, 1,000 feet. That was supposed to slow them down. Well, it took them a few years, but they got back up to those same speeds, and now they're exceeding those same speeds in a shorter track span, so or track footprint. So, I think that um, you know NHRA kind of has to look at the speeds right now in those top two categories. It's a very delicate balance act because fans want to see those speeds, but you also have to worry about the driver's safety too. It's you know that's the the mix right there. I've told you a little bit of it. Do restrictor plates really make the drivers safer and cop? You know, or I, I mean, wouldn't they be more spaced out and less chances of wrecks if they did? You know, you talk about the but what if you did run into the wall, Marky? You know, so two half dozen here, a dozen on the other. I mean, you know, not that uh, point. It's an interesting point you have there. You know, generally my gut says, hey, you want to do this the maximum level and all this, but you make a good point. You can't be having people uh, getting hurt or even worse and all that. I will say this. Look, this weekend, consider what's going on. I mean, you've got Torrance, who is, yeah, maybe, what would it have been like if you could go back in time and attend one of those Winston Cup races in Richard Petty's 10-game, or 10-race winning streak? Listen to me saying game. 10-race winning streak. I mean, what, what would that be like, you know, if you could do that? Of course you'd want to be there. Or maybe you were there. Now you might have that similar opportunity this week with Torrance or even John Forrest, funny car, 150th victory. So there's a lot going on in Bristol here, and uh, some history to be made, some stuff where you can say, I saw this. And even if you're like me, and you know, traditional baseball, football guy, but like I said, friend John Krasinski drove me down to the Olympics, we went down to the Olympics and all that, and I saw Carl Lewis win his ninth gold medal, long jump, 96 Olympics. You don't forget that. You don't forget that, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's the sort of stuff that Torrance and Force will be doing this week at Bristol. They may not have bought some advertising on my show, but hey, we'll give them the props there because it's local and, you know, what would we be if we didn't? Anyway, Jerry Bonkowski, the right rev of speed. He knows Cup Series racing. He knows the NHRA. Read him on NBCSports.com. Home of the Happy Box okay. Meal featuring...